We celebrate, we already mentioned that, we celebrate and honor our veterans today and thank them for their service. You know, we've been celebrating Veterans Day for a long time, since 1918. We've been celebrating Veterans Day. It was known as Armistice Day or Remembrance Day, kind of like where we get Memorial Day now. You know, a lot of people get all these mixed up. This, this day is set aside for the veterans, those who have served our country. Uh, a lot of times they pay a lot of honor on Independence Day, Memorial Day, and that's okay. We need to give them all the credit we can Amen. and thank them and honor them all that we can. But we've been celebrating uh, this day since the end of World War I. When you go back and look that up in history, it, I, I was hoping we'd have some children, more children. We've got some young people here tonight, but I don't know if they even teach any of this in school anymore, and people don't. Memorial Day don't mean, and, and Veterans Day and Fourth of July don't mean much to a lot of people anymore because they don't really know the meaning. But, Jimmy, in the second grade, they had they spent a lot of time on it this week. Did they? Oh, Good. Yeah. Hopefully they're doing that in school. Our children need to know the history. 1919 is when it started. Yeah, they, they need to know the history in the, uh, in the schools. Our children need to learn this. But it was Armistice Day it's when they signed the armistice with the, uh, the out German, the Allies at the end of World War I. And they have been celebrating it every year since then. Uh, and then it was changed over to Veterans Day. You know, we think about the veterans and, and there's that slogan that you see all the time that all gave some and some gave all. Some of them never came home. There's a lot of, a lot of them missing in action now from the wars. Uh, we see a lot of young people now that have the artificial legs and all in the latest the Middle East conflicts and wars. And uh, some of y'all, we've got veterans here today. We don't know anything about you and your battle scars or, you know, what you've done, but you sacrificed and you went and served. And that's what all right. it's all about. Uh, I've already recognized you. But, you know, my brother was a Vietnam veteran. He's a disabled Vietnam veteran. He had two or three Purple Hearts. He was wounded. He went through a lot. My dad was a World War II veteran. My son served almost 26 years in the military and was in Afghanistan and Iraq several different times on his, in his career. And I'm proud of all of them, but I'm proud of everybody that said we put a uniform on the of our country. I didn't go. Uh, didn't have to go. I thank God for that today. I might have been one that didn't come back. I, sometimes I feel bad because I didn't get to go. But uh, there's two types of veterans. I want to talk about this a little bit tonight. There's two types of veterans that I want to mention. 
One of them is a person that served in the military in the armed forces. That's what we're celebrating today as a uh, veteran, a person who served in the military or in the armed forces. And then there's another uh, definition of a veteran you hear a lot, and that's a person that served uh, a long time in a certain field or an occupation. You know, you hear somebody, he's a veteran baseball pitcher, or he's a veteran preacher, or he's a veter veteran firefighter. Uh, he's been there a long time. That's all he's ever done. He's a veteran at it. It's how you serve, you know, you give it your whole thing and you serve. And that's what our military veterans have done. One of the things that I like about veterans is their stories. I, I didn't go. I didn't, end it, didn't get to go. And I loved, I was talking about that uh, gentleman up in Walmart. I used to like to get to talk to him. And, I enjoy talking to veterans and they'll open up and tell you the stories that most veterans I ever meet. If you get them started, they'll talk all day long about when they are in service. And they'll share those stories, a lot of them are sad stories, a lot of them are funny stories. Uh, like, my, like I say, my dad, my brother, my son, and you know, when they get together, they get to talking about how it was when they was there and what how it was. And I just sat there and just took it all in because I didn't have nothing to say. I wasn't ever there. But, I enjoyed it, and uh, I was talking to uh, Sterling earlier uh, when my brother was at Fort Bright in the Army. I was of age to be drafted, and I would go down on the weekends when he got a weekend pass to get him, and at that time, you could actually go over the base and stuff, and I'd go out when they would be finishing up. But I don't know what all they called it, but they'd be standing in, at, in their platoons or whatever, getting passes, and the old Army sergeant, He'd pick on me. I had old long hippie hair and all that stuff, and he'd whistle at me like a girl. He said, well, won't you sign up? I'll make a man out of you and all that stuff. And I, I enjoyed all that. I cut up with him down there, but I never did go in, never did serve, never did have to. But uh, I never, you know, as we think about our veterans, I think there were four in here tonight, and we're talking about these. That I never had to serve in the, in, in the military. I never had to leave my family. You know, you got people serving right now that's left their families. Now you got women serving, leaving their children, and going and serving in our military, serving our country. And sometimes I get upset when I go talking about this and thinking about it because I think of how our country is treating these people now Amen. and how our country is turning the back yeah. on us and our military. You know, there's a big thing going on right now about the mandate trying to make the military take the vaccines. Yeah. And my son, my son's actually the one that got me to take the COVID vaccine. He said he probably had over 40 vaccines in the military. Every time they sent them somewhere, they had to get all these shots because whatever was going on in that country, they didn't want them to get it. And he, he was the one who convinced me to go ahead and take the vaccine for the COVID. And uh, I never had to go do all that. I never had to go to boot camp. Me and Sterling was talking about that. Don was an old Army guy. Uh, all of you guys have been in there, Gene and Vern. That basic training part was pretty hard. I remember my brother when he was there, my dad telling the stories and a lot of guys I knew that went. And uh, I never had to get up at 4.30 and run four or five miles before I got to go to the channel line and eat. I never had to do all that, never got to do it. Uh, I never had to peel potatoes for like 400 soldiers digs either. You know, you think about what all these guys, I remember when Eddie, my son, graduated at the Naval thing up in Great Lakes, uh, uh, above Chicago at the Great Lakes Naval thing, and they actually told, they had all these sailors that were graduating their boot camp, all standing down here, and they came out and told how many thousands of, of pounds of potato, all the food they had ate in those eight weeks, it was unreal. And I was saying, boy, I'd hate to be in the cook and have to wash all them pots and pans. But somebody in our military does all that. It's not just the guys on the front lines with the big guns. It's they all work together as a team, and they serve our country as a team. But uh, I never had to do that. I never had to wash pots. Never got to fly an airplane or a helicopter. I'm kind of thankful to God because I don't like that. I've only flew one time in my life, but. I, you know, a lot of them tell those stories, how interesting. I remember uh, my ex-father-in-law, my wife, Tonda, that got killed, her dad was a pilot. He shared stories. He would fly over with love notes. Tonda and I were dating, and him and, and uh, Ruby, her mother, would shower with us about when they were dating. 
And he was a pilot, and he would write love notes and put them in a tin can and fly over and drop them and land in their yard. And I'm thinking, that's our military guys out here, you know, I don't know. What. But you all have those stories to tell. I've never done it. Never got to work on one of those big tanks, army tanks and big trucks. And I think Dom was a mechanic. I guess he done some of that. But uh, I never got to do any of that. I never saw any action. I've never been shot at. Not in no war. But when they hear the stories, when the veterans, when you sit with them and, and they share those stories and you guys in here share some, it kind of makes me wish I would have been there. And I wish I would have got to do something. I used to take my dad up to the VA hospital and uh, I met a lot of the guys up there, some, uh, most of World War II that he was with and different ones. And, you know, we'd sit around and talk and they would get to talking about where they were at in the war and what they'd done. And I was sitting there and I, it's like, well, I missed out on a lot of stuff by not being there, you know, getting to do those. And then I think a lot of them never came home. A lot of them still going to that hospital because of their injuries and how they suffered to protect me and our freedom to come in here and have church tonight depends on yeah. our military. But the stories, they let me see a lot about what I miss by not serving and not being a veteran today. But there's two kinds of veterans. When we look at the second one, that definition of a veteran is one who serves a long time in a certain field. And I thought about that today when I was, I've got four or five messages I've preached on Veterans Day and I thought, well, I'll just pull one out and use it and the God didn't gonna do that and I'm glad that he don't, but I, I, I thought about that second and I thought, man, I kind of fit into that category. I can't stand up in here with these guys tonight and y'all applaud me for being a veteran in our military, but I can stand in here and God can applaud me for being a veteran in his army for serving him for some 40 years now in that field. I'm a veteran Christian, Amen. if you think about that. Yeah. I don't know how long I've been saved. I know Don just got saved, but he said he's a rookie. He's still, you know, probably you in the boot camp thing right now, but he's learning fast, though. He's taking orders from, from the captain. But I think about, uh, I thought about that when I was reading those definitions, I think, I kind of fit into that because I've been in the family of God for quite a while now. You know, I'm not, we'll never know it all and we'll never, I'm not saying that, saying that I'm better than y'all and I know more than y'all and all that, but I'm saying I know enough to tell some stories, to tell some of those stories. Uh, I, I, I'm talking about, these guys tell me the stories and I kind of think, man, I wish I'd have been there. I wish I could have done that. And I'm thinking, what if I tell my story? Maybe it'll make somebody say, man, I wish I was where he is at. Amen. And say, how do you get to that? I can tell them about Jesus. Amen. You know, I've been in the family for 40 years, so I'm kind of like a veteran Christian, if you will. I've been with the Lord for a good little while now. I never thought about that today, until today, about actually how long when I was reading that definition. But I got a lot of stories I can tell. I got a lot of stories. I've been through some battles. I've been through some battles. I've served. I've I've cleaned the bathrooms. I've done that latrine duty. I've helped cook some of the meals in this church in Atlanta Bar. And I'm just as happy scrubbing that floor as I am standing in this pulpit. Just getting to be in the Lord's army. Amen. And uh, I can tell that to people, what it means to me. And maybe it'll make them want to do what I do. Yeah. I thought about how, you know, I hear those stories, I think, man, I wish I'd have been in, I wish I'd have been a Marine. You know, I wish I'd have flew those Navy fighter jets. Man, that sounds like that would be so fun. If I wasn't so scared, it would have been so much fun. But I just think, what if we go around and tell our stories? You know, maybe you've been in church for a long time. Maybe you've been a Christian for 50 years or 30 or 40, whatever. You should have a whole lot of stories to tell because God brings you through a lot of battles. Amen. If you're doing anything for Him, I'll just put it this way. If you're sitting here now and you haven't been through a battle, you haven't been doing much for God. Because when you do something for Him, the devil will attack you wide open. That's right. And you better know how to put on the whole armor. Yeah. You know, one of the things they do in the military, they train you, they give you everything you need to fight, they give you all the equipment you need, they give you the uniform and the helmet and the shields and the guns and the ammunition, they give it all to you. 
Our God does the same thing. He'll give you everything you need to serve Him. But I thought about that today. What, what about telling my story? What about telling other people about me? You know, I'm not going to take a lot of time and get into a testimony tonight, but most of y'all know about me, but a lot of people don't. You know, that story gets old, tell me then here over and over, but maybe I meet somebody on the street. Maybe I meet somebody I was talking about the other day. We're to love everybody. Maybe I meet another drug addict out here on the street and I just see them and God puts it on my heart. Go tell them about the battle you've been in. They might want to hear that. Maybe they'll find out how to overcome the battle they're in if you'll just go tell them what I've done for you. And uh, I thought, man, I'm guilty for not doing that. A veteran in the Lord's Army and not telling nobody what we've been through. It's like being in the Army and not telling anybody what you're doing while you're there. I know a lot of people can't talk about it. My brother still has a hard time. He was in the infantry and was in bad stuff in Vietnam and he still, after all these years, has a hard time telling about it. But if he gets with another soldier, all of a sudden they start sharing their stories one with another because they know what it was like. And if you're there, you get to hear it just like us Christians. Maybe me and Charlie sitting somewhere having breakfast and we're talking about what God's done in this church, what He's done in our life. And you got somebody sitting at the table next to you over here and they, they start getting a little closer and say, can you share that with me? I, I, I've never heard anything like that. I did, somebody had cancer and God healed them? You know, we've been there. We've seen it happen. We've been through it. We can share that with others. Even though we're not military veterans, if you've been in God's family long enough, you're a veteran in, the, in God's army. And we've got a story to tell just like our GIs tell us. Uh, you've been rescued you know I don't know if any, any of you guys in here was a prisoner of war or not I don't think you are Gene or Vernon of you I've met a couple of people that were prisoners of war and got to talk to them and after all those years one of them used to run the pool hall in Shelby when I was an old crazy boy and hung out in the wrong place and uh, Roy that ran the pool room Roy Justice was a uh, he was on the death march. And he was sharing, he showed the scars and everything else that he got over there. And he couldn't tell the story. All of those years later, he couldn't tell that story without crying. And he shared it with me. Some of the things he went through, and it was terrible. But, uh, you know, some of the things we go through is pretty bad being a Christian. We get persecuted, we get laughed at, and mocked, and our family don't like us, and people think, think we believe in something that's not real, and all these things. And, we go through that, and we got things we can tell. But I think I thought about today, uh, the veterans in our church. I didn't think anybody being a prisoner. You know, I, I got rescued out of the prison. You did too when you got saved. Yes. We was a prisoner to the devil, to this world, and to sin. And God sent somebody out there at the church I was at. It was preacher Clampett. He was serving in God's army. He preached the message one night, and God used it to prick my heart. And the Holy Spirit got me under conviction and I got saved. And I got out of the prison and joined the army. Got in God's army. Uh, that's just a starter. That's just the first story you can tell. In my life, I can tell how he got me off of drugs and alcohol. And at 55 years old, he called me to be a preacher. And now I'm standing in a pulpit preaching God's word, serving in his Amen. army. Amen. Amen. I mean, that's not what the Army guys do and the Navy guys and the, and the Air Force guys, but I still got a, a story to tell. I've been doing it for a while. I'm a veteran of it. And I, ought to be, I know these guys. You ain't seen the wrong men here. Sterling, Vern, Don, and Gene. If you sit right here, they'll start telling you stories about what happened in service. They can tell you how rough it was, what they done, what they got to say, where they traveled to. If you get them started, that most veterans I know will do that. They'll sit and share it. They like to tell you. They like to go over it. Refresh their own memory. Gene Blanton loves to tell the stories. And uh, these other guys. As a Christian, we ought to love to tell our story too. Yeah. Yeah. We ought to be willing to share it every chance we get and, and bring on our, our leader. My question, I guess, tonight is, are you a soldier of the cross? Are you in God's army? Have you been born into the family of God? That's how you get in. You enlist. 
And you can do it today if you're not in there. Maybe God's dealing with your heart tonight. You know, you go through a process to get in the army. It used to, they had to draft. I know when I first got my draft card, I got classified 1A. I thought I was going straight to Vietnam because I dropped out of school and I was 1A. Then they came up with the lottery thing and I was three, they went by birthdays. So my birthday was December, I was 300 and something. I never did get drafted, but now you enlist. You go and join up. And you go through a, a, a thing of doing that, you decide you want to do it, and you go sign up, and then you go meet with a recruiting officer and fill out papers, and if you're good enough, they'll take you. And if you're not good enough, they'll take you anyway when they need you. But, uh, I thought about that when I was writing these notes. You know, there used to be that ad on TV, the uh, Marines, a few, few proud or whatever. The Marines look for a few good men. Mm -hmm. yeah. God's looking for every man. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to be good. He'll make you good. Yeah. But, uh, you know, maybe you've heard stories of what Jesus has done for others and you've never believed in Him and you've never joined His army. You can do that tonight. <coughs> there's a message that there's a lot in the Bible about this. And over, I'll talk just a little bit about an old a veteran from the Bible, and that's old Paul Saul that met Jesus on the Damascus Road and got in the army. And he was an old battle scarred veteran. If you go and study about Paul, he was beat, he was stoned, he was left for dead, he was put in prison, life debt, mocked, and everything else. He was a rough old veteran, rough old soldier for the Lord. And he wrote these letters to Timothy. And we've studied those, I think we've already been through those in Bible studies, Charlie's taught us, but in 2 Timothy, it tells you a lot in here. Um, if you go and read these letters, a lot of it's about calling preachers and calling people to serve and all that. But Paul relates to it as being a soldier. In 2 Timothy, uh, starting in verse 1, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, it says, that, that Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. If you're going to be a soldier for God, you better be strong in grace. It's God's grace that gets you through. It's not you, and it's not what you do. It's through God's grace that you can do what we do. Be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. In verse 2 it says, the, th the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. I think about that, and I think about the veterans. You know, these guys that was in our military, especially the ones that went and served in combat, they had leaders that's already been there. Their sergeants and their commanders have already been on that war front out in the battles. And, and they tell them what to do. They train them to keep them alive and try to help them survive and, and get the job done. But he says, The things that thou hast heard of me among witnesses, and some commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. You know, a good soldier teaches others. You learn how to do it, you teach others how to do it. Yeah. And therefore, endure hardness. If you're going to be a soldier for the Lord, you better be able to endure hardness because hard times are coming. We go through hard. You know, I get so tired. I used to hear preachers say, say this, and I've heard people witnessing the people say, if you'll just give your life to Jesus, everything will be great. It'll be easy. That you just, it'll be so good. And it is good. But it makes people think, all my problems are going to be gone. If I just give my life to Jesus, all my worries, all my troubles is gone. And that's not right. That we're going to go through trials and tribulations as long as we're on this earth. Amen. But when we got Christ in us, we can overcome every one of them. Yeah. It says that it endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man at war. I like this verse right here too. If you're talking to somebody about being in the Lord's army and serving God and whatever, wherever you serve, if you're just in the church or if you're in ministry or wherever you're serving God, you ought to take this verse to heart. I, I, this verse hit me hard during the pandemic and I've witnessed in this church how God brought me through that. God told me you just do what I called you to do and, and gave me peace. But it says, no man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life. Talking about a soldier of Christ. Soldier, I'm a soldier for the Lord. I don't need to get tangled up in politics and the pandemic and all this stuff. I'm a watchman. I'm God's under shepherd in this church. This is God's church. Amen. He's a shepherd. 
I'm the under shepherd. I'm his little helper. You're the flock. The ones in this church is the flock. You're God's sheep. I'm his little under shepherd. It's my job to pay enough attention to what's going on in the world according to God's word to warn you and watch over you and, and tell you what to do and what not to do. I'm not a dictator. I'm not God. I'm not up here to tell you how to do it. I'm up here to tell you what does say the Lord, how to go through these things we're going to go through. It says, No man that warth entangle himself in the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Good. You know, I can't please God being a, a pastor of a church or a preacher or your brother in Christ if I'm tangled up in all this mess out here in this world. I can't do it. <coughs> Y'all saw what happened, and, and we've seen it through this whole, you know, the devil's used every bit of this pandemic. We, we look at what's going on in the world. Nobody still don't understand the pandemic, other than God. There's so much confusion. The Bible plainly says that a nation divided will not stand. A house divided will not stand. A church divided will not stand. The devil is the author of division. He divides everything. Yeah. He divided for many years. Billy Graham and a lot of the old time preachers preached on how the devil was tearing the families apart. Look at history. Look at the families. Look at the families now. Grandparents raising grandchildren over and over and over because all the young generation got out of church. They got out. They got away from God. The devil slipped in and divided the family and took it over. He's divided the schools. He's divided our government. He's divided our nation. He's using all this stuff to divide it. That's my job to get in here and preach and tell you a nation divided will not stand. That's right. I can't change it. You can't change it. But God can if we pray. God can change it. A house divided will not stand. If there's trouble in your house, I can't fix that. Maybe you can't, but God can. He pray and ask God to help you change it. You don't get tangled up in it. If I spent all my time watching the news and coming in here and telling y'all about the pandemic and the shot and our corrupt government and all that, I'd never get to preach the gospel. Amen. And it wouldn't help you a bit. That's right. It wouldn't help. I wouldn't be a good soldier. Amen. You know, I'd be one of them veterans that they laughed about. Said he just thought he was. He just wore a uniform. He didn't get nothing done. I don't want to be that kind of soldier. We find that uh, Paul telling Timothy these things. Be strong. Be strong how? He don't tell him to be physically strong. That's what a soldier does. They work out. They get their bodies in the best shape they can because of what they have to do. A, a, a soldier of the cross, it says, be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. My strength comes from God. I love to get up here and tell that verse, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. That's where my strength comes from. If you're a soldier in, in God's army, you better have Christ in you. You better have His grace if you're going to try to do any fighting at all for Him Amen. to win others. Yes. Uh, teach others. He tells him to teach others. Teach them. See, Paul had been out there. Paul started all these church, been on that missionary journey. You, you, you think about Paul. Uh, Charlie's talked that a lot. We've studied about him. Paul hated Christians. That would be like the worst enemy we've got. That'd be like Putin coming over here from Russia and taking over. All of a sudden, he's our leader. But he got changed. He got changed. He wants to make America great. Paul... He's going to get rid of all the Christians, persecuting them, having them killed. And he met Jesus Christ on that road to Damascus. We know that story. And God changed him. God didn't even give you talking about changing, he didn't give him a new name. Even Paul. When you meet Jesus, you get changed. Amen. He gave him a new name. Now he's over here starting all the churches, doing the mission work, doing the missionary, teaching everybody about Jesus. And he's writing this letter. He's in prison when he's writing these letters because he's out there telling people about Jesus. He's locked up. And he's telling Timothy, young Timothy, he called him his son. He was his spiritual son. He called him his son. He said, be strong in the grace of Jesus. Be strong. 
And these things you've heard of me, the things I've told you, tell others about them. How many people do we ever tell the things that we've seen and the things that we've heard? Endure hardness as a good soldier. You know, I've seen people get in church and, and get on fire for Jesus, and you think, boy, they're going to be, that's going, they're going to be, this is going to be a preacher or something. Next thing you know, things get hard and they bail out. My son was in Iraq when they first went into Iraq. And he was a corpsman with the Marine Corps. He was in the Navy, but he was with the Marines from Camp to June. And the most of the people they treated were the Marines that when the, they'd been trained for all this stuff. And when they started fighting over there to take over Iraq, a lot of those guys just freaked out and had to get out for mental conditions. They couldn't handle it. It was too hard. They went and joined. They wanted to be a Marine. They wanted to wear that uniform. They wanted to be, a, you know, do something for the country. And when they had the conflict started and the guns started going off, they had them in the tents giving them <clears throat> medicine to calm them down. And a lot of them got sent back to the United States and had to get out of the military because it was too hard. Wow. A lot of people get in church. They get a, a, a little bit of religion in them and they get on fire and they want to do something for God. They're in God's army. And the first time the devil gets after them or something happens in church, they bail out. They can't take it. You endure hardness if you're a good soldier, especially a soldier of the Lord. You're going to go through hard times. You're going to go through, I've been through some hard times in this little church, and y'all been through some of them with me. Uh, and you don't get another thing that he told them, don't get tangled up in the things of this world. You keep your focus on Jesus. I'm on a mission. I keep my focus on Jesus. I'm going home one day to take my eyes off of him. I may get left behind, and I don't want to have to catch up. He says in verse 10, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain salvation which is in Christ Jesus. Eternal glory, endure all things, whatever you have to do. And now in verse 15, he says, Study to show yourself approved in God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, a lot of people get in the army and get in the Lord's army, but they don't never study the word. And then they get out and they try to tell somebody, they'll ask them a question. And they don't know how to answer it. Then they get ashamed of themselves. And then they quit trying to tell people about Jesus. Because it, it makes them look bad. Study. He's telling them to be a good soldier, you better study what you're going to do. I guarantee you, if you've ever been in the, in the military and you had something to do, they had a plan. And you studied it and you knew what you was going to do before you ever went to do it. Uh, in our wars, they said in those control and command centers, these generals and all these people that do these jobs, and they've got plans, they said that, and the strategies they got, and they teach, they train them leaders that go out in that field, and they command them from those centers. They've got a plan. They study war. You know, there's an old song, ain't gonna study war no more. When we get up there, we won't, because there won't never be no more. But a, a, surgeon, a soldier studies what he's going to do. In verse 26, the last verse in that uh, chapter 2, it says that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. You know the devil's going to... The Bible says the devil goes around as a roaring lion and seeking to devour whoever he can. Right. He can't take my soul. God's got it. Amen. But he can shut this mouth up. Yeah. He can take my testimony. He can stop me from being a witness. He can, let me, he can tempt me to make one big mistake and it would ruin me. I'd be put in the old stockade or whatever the Lord put me up. And uh, that snare of the devil. You know, I don't know what all y'all did. I, most of the stories I know of war was my dad and my brother. My brother Vietnam. And they had a lot of snares. I don't know if any of you guys went to Vietnam or not. But... They were famous for making all kinds of uh, traps in the jungle. They would dig holes. I remember they would dig a hole and they would take bamboo and they slice it with points on it. 
and put it in the ground and they would cover it and our soldiers would just be walking through and fall in it and kill them. Oh my word. They would set traps. Uh, they would set traps you've seen on TV, uh, a trap where they'd wrap your legs up, hang you up in the tree and then they'd come out and kill you. I mean, they had all the warfare and all, but they had all these crazy things going on. Uh, and I think about that and I think about all the things that the devil's got to try to trap us, to put us in a snare. Be a good soldier, study, be strong. Be strong in God's grace. You know, one of the things that hurts us in, in grace, you can't say enough about grace. God's grace is sufficient. God's grace got me where I'm at. God's grace is going to get me where I'm going. Amen. Without His grace, I wouldn't be saved today. But you think about, we should, we're to share His grace with others. When somebody offends us, we need to have a little grace toward them before we come back and just, and, and, and just that love that we're supposed to have for them. I preached about Sunday goes away if you don't have grace. That's right. It's all mixed in together. Have grace one for another. To be a soldier of the Lord, number one, you've got to enlist. You've got to be born again. If you're going to be in God's army, you've got to be in His family. Number two, you've got to be trained. You asked any of these guys in there that was in the military, these veterans, mm -hmm. first thing you done was went training. Boot camp and then whatever he was going to after that, they train you. Mm -hmm. I remember my brother, he, he was in uh, the infantry, and he went into the advanced infantry. I remember the day he finished down there and they gave him his orders, all those guys' heads just dropped. And after the graduation, I asked him what that meant. He said, I'm going to Fort McClellan, Alabama. And I said, what's that? And he said, the fast jungle training, I'll be in Vietnam in eight weeks. And he was, six weeks, actually. Wow. And, uh, but they trained him, and I remember getting, when I got to go down there, when he was training him, and that sergeant would tell him, you know, I had another whole sermon on this, and it may come later. Discipline. All you guys that was in the military, number one thing in the military is discipline, right? Amen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They tell you how to make your bed, they tell you how to eat, they tell you how to fold your sheet. Tell you That's why most military guys are organized, because when they was in the military, you had to be. It, it was discipline. My brother shared at Fort Bright, they had screen rooms at the end of the barracks, and his first day he went to ask the drill sergeant a question, and he opened the door and walked in without knocking. He stood there for 30 minutes and knocked on the door. And finally the drill sergeant told me to come in. They teach you discipline. But I was there one time and the sergeant was talking and he said, the reason you dug a hole six foot deep to put one cigarette butt in it because you put it out on this base. Yeah. I mean, all, they would all these things they were doing, I got to say, they said, the reason we teach you that is because that may save your life in war. If the sergeant says don't raise up, it don't matter if it's two hours or two days. You're going to keep your head down. They're doing it to protect you. They're doing it to be disciplined as a soldier to do what the commander tells you to do. And it was all about discipline. And I thought about that discipleship. Being a veteran. We are a disciple, a follower. And, and us veterans ought to be telling these new guys what we've learned and why you don't do this and why you do do that. Just like they did in there. That discipline, it looks bad from the outside. When you, I saw a guy do 50 push ups because he called his weapon a gun one day down at that military base. I wouldn't know the difference, but if a guy's in the military, don't, you don't call them guns, you call them weapons. I saw this guy do 50 push ups just because he said gun. I thought, that's ridiculous. Wow. You know, but they was teaching, that's what you call it, you'll call it that next time. And I'm sure he did. But there's things that we have to learn. If we're in God's army, we've got to be trained to do and not to do. Uh, one of us attend church. The Bible says, forsake not to assemble as yourselves together for encouragement, for exhortation. We need to be together just like we are tonight. Amen. Uh, so many times people come in here and they tell me how bad they feel, how they fought the devil to get here. And then when they leave, they tell me how good they feel. Amen. It's yeah. not a thing I do. That's because God does it. He blesses you for being here. Yeah. Uh, if you're in the army, these veterans in here, if they had a detail to do and they didn't show up, it'd be a bad day, wouldn't it? You better believe it. God wants to bless you. You need to.
trained, you need to read and study the Word of God. If you're going to serve God and do what He wants you to do, you've got to know about Him and you've got to know what His Word says. you got to learn to pray. you got to learn to talk to Him. You know, uh, the soldiers, they had a commander. They told them what to do. You get somebody who has to tell you what to do. You have to know how to communicate with them. I know in a war, you're out in the jungle or out in the field, wherever you're at, over on the desert. you got to have communication to a commander somewhere or you, you won't last long. we got to be in constant communication and prayer. you got to be armed. You know, they arm these soldiers. They arm our military. You go over in the fish and it tells you all about the armor of God, what we're supposed to have. Uh, we need the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. We need that sword. We need God's word everywhere we go. Amen. Have it in our heart. Be ready instantly. We need to be willing to take a stand. That's that's something that happens a lot in this world now. You got a lot of people that say they're Christians. They profess to be Christians, but they won't take a stand because they're afraid they'll offend somebody. When it comes up, homosexuality, the Bible says it's a sin. If it comes up, you're around it, and you have to rebuke it. Rebuke it. Stand up for the Bible. Stand up for God. Uh, somebody lying, a drunkard. Well, I'm a drunkard, but that don't mean they ain't going to heaven. That's the devil telling you a lie because the Bible says no drunkard will enter into heaven. You rebuke sin. You don't offend nobody. You tell them the truth because if you love them, you'll tell them the truth. Amen. Because you want them to go to heaven. Yeah. You want them to repent. Uh, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to wear that uniform. Put on the whole armor and wear it everywhere you go. Don't be ashamed of it. You know, the... The Bible tells us if we're ashamed of Him, He'll be ashamed of us before God. That's right. Number five on that list, you need to obey the commander. You need to do what God's called you to do. Maybe God's called you to, to preach. Maybe God's called you to be a missionary. God's called you to play instruments and sing and whatever. Miss Jerry sends out cards. I talked to somebody today. What a blessing. They get a card. And she don't tell nobody she does it. I didn't know that because I told Jerry Berry sent it. And they said, that's who does that. She don't take no credit for it. She just does it for this church and for the Lord. Amen. You serve with a glad heart. You serve because you want to. I hope and pray that people in this church will be just as proud a year from now as these veterans in here are tonight for serving their country. We ought to be proud to be able to serve in God's army. Amen. And we ought to tell the stories that we've had, that we know. We've all got, if you're born again, you got one story right there, how God rescued you. Amen. Yeah. You can start with that. Uh, you know, we got people here that's been healed, started having cancer, God healed him. He's got a story to tell. Amen. We got all kinds of stories in here to tell. Uh, Bill back there had cancer and God's got it out of it. We've all had something happen, something going on. We've struggled in our homes. Cheryl, my sister-in-law, she had a burden. Her children and grandchildren, and they just had her burden so over to tell. She shut it in here how God's given her peace now. Amen. Amen. We've all got war stories. We're all, we're still on the battlefield. You know the difference between us and those guys in those wars? We get in the battle and we know we already won before we even start. Our victory is Jesus. Amen. Our victory is in Jesus Christ. Yeah. We're on the battlefield. We're just here trying to finish up and getting on out of here. <coughs> he left us here for a reason. And that's to witness to others, to be the to be the missionary, to tell others about Jesus. He said he'd make disciples, go into all that nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And make disciples. I, I thought about that in the military. That discipline. That's mentioned in the churches these days. Discipleship. A lot of churches get people and, and they don't try to train them anything. They come and they go because they don't learn. And uh, we need to reach out. We don't have we don't have those classes like some of the churches. Discipleship classes, training units and all that they used to have. But we got veterans in this church that know that's been here for a long time, been with Christ. And I'm getting to do that 
because that was my brother-in-law. We were together and talked a lot anyway because we're family. I'm getting to disciple him, and it's a blessing. Uh, when they ask you something, and you, you know the answer to it. I don't think I know much, but sometimes they ask you a question, and you've already been there, and you've already done it. God's already brought you through it, and you can say, look, this is how what happened to me and how I got through it. Just give it to God. He'll take care of it. Amen. Amen. Yes. We got those stories. Just like the, uh, I'm sure Sterling could tell you all kinds of stories that people that was in the army before him had been there for a while. And they said, man, this is hard. How do you do? I'm homesick. Oh, it'll be all right, man. You'll get used to it. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they share with one another the brotherhood. All these guys that's in the military, they still got a brotherhood. I don't care who they are, Marines, Army, whatever. There's a brotherhood, there's a bond. Once they're in there, they're there. That's like any Marine. You can ask them once a Marine, always a Marine. They never quit being a Marine even when they're old. And that's the way we are as Christians. We don't ever stop. We're never going to stop. We're not going to quit. We're going to get old. He's going to take us home. And we're going to keep on being in his army. Amen. I hope I've challenged you tonight. I hope yeah. God's challenged you, not me, to... Uh, as we celebrate Veterans Day, I'm not doing this to take anything away from our military veterans. I, I love our country and I'm proud of everybody that's ever served. Amen. But when I read that definition of being in a field for a long time or an occupation for a long time, I thought, there's a lot of veterans in this church, not only these military ones. That's right. Amen. Some of y'all have been in the war for a long time and we got a lot of stories to tell. And maybe... It'll make others want to be what we are, do what we do. Amen. 